Okay, here are two hooves I want to show you. Now, this is the front foot of Toby, the horse in the dissection video. I did a back foot on him. Okay, and this is the foot of Cat Dancer. Um, this was Toby's foot, and this was Cat Dancer's and uh, this foot here is just like this one here but I want you to notice something okay now notice the difference in the lamina okay remember the lamina is real tight and the coffin bone was very tightly connected to the wall here whereas on Cat Dancer you had this uh, multiplied stretched lamina right here Okay, now I want you to notice that this foot had a very tight white line. Okay, uh, it, the, the stretching of this lamina never showed. And uh, this happens in a lot of horses that just even get stretched toes. Maybe they don't have full-blown laminitis, but due to mechanical reasons, the toe has stretched out. Maybe... Uh, the walls haven't jammed him back and lifted up the internal foot like this but but the, when the toe stretches out a lot of times you will get this this increase in the lamina here where it's it's <clears throat> I guess what it is is the cells proliferate and grow and just keep adding onto the lamina here to try and keep it connected to the foot inside and so even though this foot here had a tight, see both feet had a tight white line. Do you see that? Right here you can see the tight white line here, the tight white line here, and on the cadaver foot a tight white line here, which is really yellow. Remember the white line is really yellow and it's where the wall and sole connect like so. So both feet had a tight white line um, but the difference was, here, we're going to move Toby's back foot here. The difference was, one of the things uh, you want to see here, uh, okay, well, one difference is that Toby's coffin bone was up here, okay? Her coffin bone was clear back here, clear back there, and lifted way up in the back, and actually su lifted so high that it was separated from the sole. So even though you see this this tear here and you would think the coffin bone would be right there, in reality the tip of her coffin bone is clear back here. Because again, what happened? Okay, the bars in that foot, now let me explain to you why it's called rotation if I can find the bone why it's called coffin bone rotation because you're not just dealing with the bone here this bone is held stationary and again this isn't the right joint and there would be a, a navicular bone here and stuff but I just want want to show you why okay the bone is held on the joint eh. okay by uh, Anyway, the boat is held together by the joint. It's really early in the morning. Haven't had enough coffee, haven't had enough anything yet, so I'm a little brain dead. The reason it's called rotation is because these joints here are stuck together, and all that coffin bone can do if it moves is rotate like this, just like a doorknob. So while the bone is holding that stationary, like so and it's connected together okay um well with the joints and i mean all that because obviously that part ain't connected it it's held together like so okay so it can rotate okay just like a doorknob almost okay what happened was as the back of the internal foot got and the cartilages and the bars started lifting up and pushing up the internal foot and pushing it back it rotates on that joint see that's why it's called coffin bone rotation because when the lamina in the wall gives way 
the foot will rotate like that. And uh, so, uh, anyway, that's why it's called coffin bone rotation. So what happened to her was as the bars, okay, let's take a look at them bars again. Okay, as the bars and the wall jammed up in the side, remember that the, the hoof is supposed to have at least a 20 degree slant to the hairline there, going from up here in the toe back to the heels. Okay, hers was straight across. Okay, and then that bar grew up in her foot like that. Like that there. Now remember, I cut this part off. Okay, and it lifted, started lifting the internal foot a little bit at a time. Just a little bit at a time. And as it did, as it did, then these... This lamina connection would just stretch a little and a little more and a little more and a little more. Now right here is the tip of the frog. Now eventually what it did is it mechanically just started pulling that foot up and pulling that foot up and pulling that foot up to where finally it pulled it all the way back to where the tip of the coffin bone was at the apex of the frog. And the held, foot was being held there in a vise. And so that horse was walking on its toe like this on the tip of its coffin bone. Even though it's busted right here through, it finally busted where the lamina held. See? <clears throat> you can see it on this one too. Okay, this one never got cleaned up. I kind of cleaned that one up and stuff. But you can see where it busted through right here. Okay, but is the coffin bone right there? No, the coffin bone was clear back here. Okay, it's just that that finally just gave way right there. And this, what you see right here, this is sole. This little bitty thin, oh, sorry, that little bitty thin kind of curled up piece there, that's sole. That's how thick the sole was. It was just paper thin, basically, coming under here. But it was covered up with all kinds of dead soul. See there? Okay, so... Oh, I don't know how long I've gone. I needed to put, set a timer on this. Okay, so... So, one thing that I can't show you on that foot, but that I can show you on this foot that also happened as the internal foot was lifted... Oops. As the internal foot was lifted... Lifted in the rear like so. Okay, it also started separating. It started stretching. See, now the internal foot is connected into the bulbs right here. And this periopal is a part of the hoof capsule. And so what it started doing was it literally lifted up the foot and started actually forcing it out of the hoof capsule and it stretched the periopal bulbs right here. Yes, man, we gotta get some more light on the subject. Okay. It stretched the periopal to where it finally lifted the internal foot out of the hoof capsule. Remember I told you that it separated the sole corium and the sole internally, and there was another sole growing on the bottom of the foot. Okay, now you can see, look at there, you can see how that hoof wall goes straight across back here. Now, it could be that all the grass that year wasn't helping this any at all, but this was also human error in not trimming these bars okay see how that bar is is just laid over and made it so easy to grow up into the foot and shove that internal foot up it'd be like if you had a jack in your shoe jacking your your foot up out of your shoe that's exactly except your let's say your shoe grows to your foot <clears throat> 